All right, let's look at this recording King Banjo. It's kind of special. Uh, this was made uh, in 1997 by uh, Mark Taylor and Greg Rich. Um, he either had just left the company or was about to leave the company. And uh, let's hear what it sounds like. Really nice banjo. look at this banjo uh, and this is uh, obviously made in America it uh, is one of maybe five or seven or eight banjos supposedly that uh, Rich and Taylor and I mean Greg Rich and Mark Taylor made uh, it has a Tennessee 20 tone ring in it and I'm going to actually take the resonator off but let's first of all Go up the neck and you can see the very nice recording king type binding on it. Pretty good copy. Now Greg Rich owns the name recording king, so that's where that all came from. And you'll notice that uh, when they do recording king copies, the ones made in America don't have, I believe, the this uh, inlay pattern on them. This is unique. So we have, uh, you can also go up to the headstock. It looks pretty cool there. I'll be taking the resonator off while you do that. All right. Now I'm going to turn it around, and it's a curly maple banjo. So this is essentially a Gibson Granada in a, as far as the parts, the gold plating, except that... Uh, Rich and Taylor, amongst banjo players, when they play them, would agree that at the time Rich and Taylor was making much better banjos than Gibson. Now, of course, Greg Rich had left Gibson in 93 and worked with uh, Rich and Taylor from 93 through, I guess, around 97, and they had something to prove. So he had to make banjos, which at the time uh, sounded better and were made better than the Rich Air Gibson banjos. At least that was his goal, okay? So I'm not gonna get into a big uh, debate about that, but uh, they had to sound really good or why would anybody buy them? And if you were back at that time, almost all the great banjo players were playing Rich and Taylor banjos. J.D. Crow, Sonny Osborne, Don Ray, Wayne Reno, uh, Little Roy, no, I don't think Little Roy was playing one. Uh, anyway, he had most of the, the name banjo players were playing Rich and Taylor, oh, Terry, ba Terry Balcom, okay. Anyway, so that's how good they were. So that, that's the front of the banjo, and then, of course, we look at the resonator, Curly Maple. Now, the thing that uh, is kind of interesting about this is that with the exception of the uh, emblem on the tone ring, which we really can't see very well, which says Tennessee 20, there are no serial numbers, no markings, nothing on this, okay? Now, we talked to Greg Rich, and he explained to us what happened, that, in fact, the Rich and Taylor Company made these, and uh, that's it. So... It's essentially an extraordinary banjo. We're selling it really cheap when you consider it's a, an historic instrument. When you consider that Greg Rich 
had a lot to do with these banjos and that it was probably the first of the American-made Recording King banjos. Now, I'm, don't quote me on that because maybe he made one a year before or something, but this is a very important banjo and they only made a few of them. If you have any questions, you can uh, call Andy at 404-372-5482 or you can go to banjowarehouse.com to see more pictures. Um, if you want, if you live anywhere near here, you can come and visit us. Just give us a day's notice because we might be out looking for banjos. And that's about it. If you like these videos, <coughs> go ahead and uh, hit your subscribe button. And that's basically it. So we'll see you guys later and have a great day.